Guys, back for another Portable Clint. I am very excited about this guest. I mean, I really am. Hollywood royalty is in the house. Um, let's just get him in here. Jason Ritter. Whoa! Whoa. <laughs> get in here, dude. Oh, get right. in here. Look at you, man. How's it going? Jason, the fact that you're here is wonderful, dude. You oh. said yes so quick, and I just loved that. That meant the world to me. Well, I've known you for a long time. I know, yeah. dude. You're awesome. Okay. <laughs> Before we get going, did did the business choose you or did you choose the business? Business um, meaning Hollywood. It was a little bit of both, I think. I mean, I, I was definitely like around it and I saw a lot of it and I saw my parents involved and I knew that my grandparents had been involved on my dad's side. And um, so there was a little element of like, this is a, you know, this is a lifestyle that, you know, I like... Um, that seemed like a choice that people make for better or for worse. Um, was there a, was there a moment where you go, I want to do that, or was it just always, um, yeah, let's do it? There was. It, it started off kind of just like I just was doing plays and stuff in, in uh, elementary school at the Santa Monica Playhouse and some other places, and and it and it uh, in elementary school and stuff like that. Um, and then, but I was sort of unaware. It wasn't like really a choice. And then. <clears throat> Towards the um, middle end of high school, I was like, I, I got back into it, and that was when I sort of was like, oh, I actually do want to, to okay. do this. Okay, okay, all right. Um, yeah. Okay, so now, let's start from the get-go. Okay. First of all, do you know anything about your great-grandfather? I know a little bit about him, yes. Your great-grandfather? Yes. Jim. The father? Okay. Tell me about, was Jim in the business at all? No. Where was Jim? Out of Texas? Out of Texas, yeah. East Texas uh, in Carthage. Uh, they lived in a um, very small um, place with uh, many children. <laughs> and um, Tex being one of them. And Tex being one of them. It was, Tex, it, it was Tex your grandfather's real name? or was it a His given? real name was Woodard Maurice. I'm, so, I'm always so jealous when people are called Tex because yeah. I would love for that nickname <laughs> to stick on me. But I mean, they say it in a like in a, in a bad way. He's no, up no. there, Tex. <laughs> well, I think I, as far as I understand, when he moved to New York to try to make it as an actor, um, he, his accent, people just started calling him Tex there. They're okay, like, that's yeah. cool. That's really cool. <laughs> So wait, so he, well, I'm sorry. I should have done more research, and I thought I did. But was he an actor, then a then a uh, uh, a musician, or a musician? Then I think actor. he always was sort of both. But there wasn't uh, there wasn't really. Um, I mean, he he was a musician, and he wanted to be an actor. He, he was a performer essentially. Um, but when he first moved to New York, and he was like. You know that he was like eating ketchup and beans and trying to like, you know, basically make it happen. Uh, there were some musicals that he was kind of doing and getting involved into, and then, um, and then the, the the cowboy thing and the singing cowboy uh, that became a that became a big part of it later. But he didn't. That wasn't like a niche when he first started. He just was like, he just had this drive to do that okay high noon was one of his biggest songs yeah and that was on a movie was he in the movie or he was he just... not in the movie he just sang the theme song for that movie and it was uh and then he sang it at the oscars as well did he really uh, yeah and you never met him because he he, he came and went before you were born yes. correct he died in 60, 74 74 and you were born in what year 80 80 okay so Tex Ritter mm -hmm. is married an actress. Yep, they met uh, on a movie called Rainbow Over the Range, Dorothy Faye Southworth, my grandma. Okay, <laughs> awesome, okay. So then they had kids. They had kids, they had my dad and uh, and Tommy, okay. my dad's brother. I, I don't know about Tommy, what's Tommy? What's, what, tell me about Tommy. Uh, Tommy, he's, a, he's an amazing human being. Uh, Any in the business at all? Uh, no, not really, no, he, um, he's, he's uh, he he does a lot in um, we don't have to go too yeah, okay yeah. great okay yeah. great I just want to know if he was an actor and if he kind of like got in with you guys or no no okay okay yeah. so where where was Tex Ritter where did he give birth to John LA that was in Los Angeles yeah okay they had moved here because most of those uh, the 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 westerns that they were just cranking out in the thirties yep, and forties yep. uh, were like in the San Fernando Valley yeah up there. yeah. Do you ever, do people ever come up to you to say, hey, I knew your granddad, I knew your dad's stories a lot? Uh, 
Yeah, I mean, it, it's sort of interesting depending on where I am in the country. Um, sometimes, some areas I get more tech stories, some areas I get more uh, my dad stories. And, uh, and that has to be a great thing, knowing that that's kind of like a way of them saying hi to you by being... It does feel like that. It's like, you know, it makes you think of, of your own life in the world. You, you go around and you create these little stories and then they're like little time capsules for yes. those people who carry the stories to maybe pass them on to a child or someone else and go, hey, you know, you never knew this because your dad or your granddad didn't tell you every single little thing that happened. Well, but well. this was my experience of it. and. You know, I mean, and it goes both ways. You can have, I, I know a couple of people who have <laughs> go around apologizing. I'm like, oh, you met my, I'm so sorry. Was he horrible? <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, so, well. So I feel mostly like. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, okay. Well, I have my own story, which was back in uh, the early 2000s. Yep. Uh, I was in a sketch comedy group with, with your good friends, Simon Helberg, Ben Covet. Uh, Derek Waters. I mean, anyway, it was a good group. And you brought your dad yeah. to the show. Dude, I was so honored. And I, and, I, and I tell this to anybody who will listen, but your dad made a straight line to me to come up to me to say, Clint, I don't know if he said Clint, but I'm going to add that <laughs> just for dramatic purposes. Yeah. Clint, you were so funny. You, wow, wow, wow. Yeah. Dude, that meant the world to me. Oh, man. And then he would always bring, he would like the De Chanel sisters would oh, be yeah. there. Like it was always a cool hub. Did you go to Crossroads? I did go to Crossroads, yeah. Um, and so that was mostly, that was where uh, Ben Covet, Simon, Gudrun, um, uh, Derek. No, Derek, Derek, no, Derek, Derek Lader yeah, yeah. with us. Um, but yeah, the De Chanel's, um, yeah. And you know what's so funny is uh, Melanie Linsky was at a lot of those yep, shows. Yep, she sure I was. didn't really... I'd probably met her there, but... Yep, yeah. yep, she sure was, man. Uh, okay, so anyway, also to add to the story, your dad asked us to come perform for him with a, in front of a group of people in Santa Monica. That meant the world to me, man. Oh, man. <laughs> I mean, dude, your dad saying, hey, that comedy group, I want them to come perform for me. And I was just, wow. Well, I think, you know, my dad, he, he knew... You know, he had had some people in his life who had been supportive of him, and he just always remembered how important that is and what that feels like to have some kind of validation. And also, it was it, it, it was honest. You know, I mean, like he he didn't like things that he didn't like, and then and but if he did like something, then he would try to do whatever he could to kind of um, you know support and. Well, he supported. I mean, he yeah. left a lasting impression just on me, and I saw him twice in my life. Yeah. So that's that's really great. Okay, one last thing about your father, uh, Three's Company. We all know the story that you were in the the cre you were at the beginning oh, yeah. of it, right? Yes. <laughs> my question to you, and is and is you at a petting zoo, right? Yeah. Do you the get goat. residuals on that? I don't think so. <laughs> I think because I think it, I like broke the the law i didn't even have my you know, oh you just car. got in there yeah, and yeah. did it I, yeah i um i was you know they were at the zoo they were filming all those things um and i got out of my mom's arms and i i went over into the but you know in that same thing apparently my dad like goes back into this the cage and he like falls back and he goes like Ugh. and this guy came over and was like that's the orangutan cage and like <laughs> you could have been mauled like don't do that it's not funny. <laughs> <laughs> so like in, uh, the, in that opening thing where he like kind of is sitting on the bench and I think he watches a woman walk by and he like falls back. There's an orangutan. I do like, remember, yeah. <laughs> right, right off screen, just like <laughs> waiting to get him. Do you think of that story every time you see that? Every time I see that, I yeah, I'm like, oh, there's me and a goat. There's one my dad didn't know how close he was to danger. Oh, wow. Yeah. I mean, last thing. I mean, he was a physical comedian. Yes. Which TV, I didn't know, I don't think I ever saw a physical comedian until then. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so we move on. You go, you, you're hanging out with us, you're coming to our shows. Did you just move back from New York? When did you... I think I started coming to your shows... Simon and I had been roommates in college. Okay. And then he moved back to LA and I was still stayed in New York. And so I, I'm not sure if I was done yet or if it was the summer times, but I, I knew that Simon had started this whole branch of his uh, his life without me. Right. Um, 
And uh, but I just remember coming to see the shows, and you know, when we grew, when we were growing up, we would go see Groundling shows. We would we like we were a little improv nerds. We were obsessed. When we were in New York, we went and saw like every Sunday night, even if we had homework or essays, we would go see uh, the free ASCAT show at, at UCB, which is funny because the show right before was five dollars and had a much shorter line. But we, <laughs> we all went to the free show because. They were like always a little looser, and they didn't care because they were like, "You didn't ban, yeah, just go wild," and it was always so amazing. And so I came back, and Simon was actually like doing it with you guys and doing sketches, and and it was so funny. You well, guys, the sketches were so. Well, funny. Jason, thank you, and I believe you because I don't know if it's a crossroad thing or where y'all were raised, but you guys always supported. You guys always came to every show, oh, even yeah. though you saw the show, you kept coming back. So, well, that also, I mean, that's like, it works for like a couple of shows, but if it's if it's not an enjoyable, fun show, I probably would have stopped. Well, okay. <laughs> like, do you feel supported? All right. All right. <laughs> okay, good deal. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you guys, it really was like, a, it was like an all-star show. It was a so special time. funny. Special yeah. time. Okay, so you start working. Mm -hmm. You're, when do you, okay, what's the big, what's the biggest gig that you do right when you get back? Right when I get back from New York uh, was, I think that was when I I got, I mean, I had already we, done a couple were, of things. Yeah, you did Law & Order in New York. I did Law & Order in New York when I was at school. Um, and uh, I had I had done, um, uh, my first movie was called Mumford. Okay. Uh, that Zoe Mumford, was in, yes, and Simon yes. was in too. Wow, that's right. Um, How did you all get the part? Did you guys know the, the, the director? Well, that was an interesting, so, so, Zoe at that point had already, she was already like kind of a pro and had been auditioning and going out and had an agent manager and stuff. Simon and I, um, well, our friend John Kasdan, who is okay. Lawrence's son, Lawrence yeah. wrote and directed Mumford. He said, my dad is doing this movie. They're looking for a 15 year old kid or whatever. Um, here's, here's an audition don't like get your hopes up but if you want to do this because we were all in the theater department he's like if you want to do this this is a real casting director this is like it's a good experience for you to just audition uh anyway and so we we did and um and uh and then i ended up getting the part and simon ended up getting another part and um and it was it was it was crazy but it did feel like a lucky like a fluke, like I wasn't like, I've arrived. I was like, that, okay, I gotta, you know, I gotta. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's always fun when you know people on the set. Yes, yeah. I mean, it was, I was, it was, it was an incredible job because Lawrence is such a loving person and a director and I was terrified. And it was like one of those things where I got the part and I was like, yes! And then it was like a real set and I had never been on a set where I had to do things and my anxiety level just went and, oh, wow. um, but everyone was so lovely and cool and nice and yeah. Jason, I'm going to ask you one question and we won't get into it after this but are all your friends famous and, and fathers <laughs> are famous? I mean because Crossroads produces I don't know. It, it just, well, it is, I mean like you know, there's a certain number of factors. Like, Los Angeles is a, uh, you know, one of our main exports and worldwide exports is entertainment. So, yeah. a lot of people who live here are in the entertainment business. And then you have a school like Crossroads that sort of fosters an artistic way of, you know, learning and and um, and has sciences and arts sort of like equal. Like, oh, you did great on your math test, but what was that painting all about? <laughs> <laughs> Not exactly that, but, you know, but like, you know, they, that's funny. They, they foster different, uh, you know, they, they put uh, importance on many different aspects. And so it, it sort of tracks that, like, a, that people who have made their career being uh, entertainers. Were, yeah, so the answer is, sure, answer is <laughs> yes, there are, were a lot of people, you know, whose parents were writers or producers or actors or directors or things like that. And, you know, it made you have to be very careful about what movie you said you hated oh over the well, I bet I bet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I bet okay let's get down to the most important credit you have on your IMDB mm -hmm. Freddy versus Jason <laughs> yes tell me about that because that was kind of like at the beginning of your career that was the first thing that happened after I got back from New York I remember and I thought that was the coolest thing for some reason that out of all your 105 IMDB credits <laughs> I'm like I want to ask him about that one yeah yeah 
tell me about a little bit about that. Anything interesting? Well, it was it was a thing where um, basically they had already cast the part, um, and they had already done a huge um, swath of auditioning, and then they were having to recast uh, okay. the, the main part. And so is they, that is, is that a bad sign when there's recasting going on? At that point, the actor that they had cast had, had was having some issues, uh, like some substance abuse issues. Oh, I okay, think, yeah. okay, I got you. And um, <clears throat> and uh, and so the the second the second round of auditioning, they didn't want to audition anyone who had auditioned the first time. And okay. I had been in New York, so I Perfect I was in timing. that smaller little group of, of people. And uh, and then I auditioned for it, and then that, they flew me up to Canada. This is a crazy story, but uh, <laughs> by the way, this is Jason Voorhees versus Voorhees, yeah, there's against J um, what's Freddy Freddy Krueger. Freddy Krueger. Yeah. Okay, I just want to make sure you guys knew what I was talking Both about. Both of whom scared me as children. Really? Mostly Freddy. Freddy was like I only I, the first one of, of the Nightmare on Elm Street I saw was Freddy's Dead with Breck and Meyer, and had like. All these Nintendo yes, references. Yes, yes. And it was funny and terrifying, and um, and and it really sat with me. Like I, I remember being like, that was scary. <laughs> so I can never sleep again. <laughs> exactly. It's yeah. It's a really good psychological trick. It's like, hey, that thing that you have to do eventually. <laughs> you're like, well, he can only kill you if you blink. So don't. Um, but uh, yeah. So um, so I so I went. Um, well, no, I for, I well, no you it. said it was a fascinating story, and, oh, I, and oh, oh, I interrupted oh, oh. you. So I was up, up on the. So I, they were flying me up, and I was I, to, to Vancouver to Vancouver okay. to, to do my final audition for Freddy vs. Jason. And Justine Bateman happened to be sitting right next to me. Jason and, Bateman's sister. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. who's an amazing person. Did you actor. Did, did you know her before no. this? Okay. And I was the so only nervous that we did started to kind of talk. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, go ahead. And we just started to talk, and I sort of told her like what my what was happening, and she gave me the most incredible like pep talk. And again, never met her, no context. Wow, I was wow, just a wow. person on the plane next to her, and I recognized her obviously, but. There was, you know, I hadn't done anything really. She wasn't like, "Were you in that Law and Order? Were you?" <laughs> um, she just was incredibly giving and lovely, and was like, "You can do this. The right thing is going to happen." And blah blah. blah. And it was just it stuck with me forever. Jason, don't I've, I've said this before? Isn't it isn't it special to have those angels that help you along the yes, way? Yes, absolutely. It's so important. I mean, it really is. Little two-minute pep talks or a flight pep talk really changes everything. If you're on a set and you keep messing up and some actor goes, hey, dude, yeah, you can fine. do it. Yeah. yeah. That's all you need. Just a little pep talk. Yeah. Check in every Someone's once in a while. saying, yeah, I'm in your corner. You're fine. You have a right to be here. Yeah. You know? so there's yeah. this strange thing of like this, th there's this world that is meant for certain people, but not necessarily for you. And you, you're like, I'm a, I'm a, I'm faking it. I'm the only one who they're going to be like, you know, they're gonna be a dog. Right. Like, it's like, what are you doing here? Like, this guy's not a real artist. He's just yeah. he's trying to. He just wants to. Be. Um, so, so That's yeah, funny. it's really amazing when someone goes, "Huh, oh, we're, we're everyone's like that." We're you know, yeah. Um, you you have every right to be here. You, you know, just relax and trust yourself. And okay, um, well, well, with that being said, what, because I can't go over 105 credits, but. <laughs> Tell me this before we move on. Yeah. Has there been a time on the set where you thought you bit off more than you can chew? Like you really freaked out? You had tons of lines you couldn't memorize? Just something? What was the? Go ahead, answer that. Well, there was there there been a couple of times. I mean, there's a certain element of everything. There there's this like ambition and like desire when I'm having an audition. I'm like, I'm gonna. I this is part of mine. I want it and give it to me and I'll do anything for it and then there have been a couple times where I was like alright sure yeah come on and I'm like wait 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 I'm not sure actually I don't know, <laughs> I know how to do that one thing but like uh, the whole thing the whole thing okay I, I, my plan was to not get it and then be like I could have done that um, oh, that's but, funny, but yeah there was a, there were a couple uh, things like that one was a, a um, this movie called Education of Charlie Banks yes. that I uh, auditioned for and it was one of those like swing for the fences kind of auditions where I was surprised that they let me even come in. And then uh, the director, Fred Durst, um, was he had never seen anything. I mean, again, I hadn't done that many things, but he had no previous context for me, so he was able to just sort of see my audition. 
and not go, oh, this is the, you know, this is like some nice guy from, you know, I don't know. Um, so he, he had a sort of clean slate and then, but it was, you know, it was at that point where I was like, oh boy, I don't know if I can uh, do this. And then again, like his trust in me and the other cast members' trust and belief in me um, really Powerful helped me stuff. Yeah. yeah, it's it's incredible. Okay, so you do Jason versus Freddy, mm -hmm. or Freddy versus Jason, however. <laughs> okay, then you book your first series, Joan yes. of Arcadia. Yeah. Tell me about that. So, I, so I, yeah, I, I auditioned for that. I guess what? Wait, was did do you want? Listen, I'm sorry, I kind of messed up there. Do you like? Do you want movies or TV? First of all. A a a anything. Okay, well, I yeah. guess when I'm, when you moved out here, what were you going for? Oh, I see. I I I didn't really know. I mean, I I had I had a, you know, like you have a sort of trajectory in your mind of some actor that you're like that would be so cool to be, have like that thing, and then it kind of it doesn't. It's, everyone has their own sort of journey, and um, I didn't really know. I just wanted to work. But the one thing about TV that I knew, because already independent films had started, you know, they were around, and you could work without um, really making enough to support yourself. So the idea of a TV show um, meant that I could like. So I came back from college and I moved back into my mom's house. Okay. Um, and and I and so uh, the idea of a TV show or something which was as close to like a steady job as we get. Um, was was appealing to me just for like financial uh, you know freedom. Okay. And then I and then Joan of Arcadia was such a beautiful, wonderful script, and I loved it so much. And that kind of that <clears throat> show was almost before its time because the female, the powerful female, was in charge, right? Yeah, yeah. Which was great. Yeah, Amber Tamlin. And you did how many seasons of that? Two seasons. What would, what has been your longest gig on TV? Well. Joan of Arcadia was the longest show that I was a regular on that, um, uh, because everything else that I've done has been canceled after one season, but the longest show that I've been involved in, uh, was Parenthood, like, for, in okay. terms of years. I, I came in and out, and I was in some, uh, I think I had at least one episode every season, but, um, but some seasons I was heavier in, sometimes I wasn't, but that was my one experience with, like, a long-running, successful show. If you could pick something right now, what would it be? Would it be to go do a major motion picture or to book a series regular right now in your life? Oh, man. I mean, I feel like major motion pictures are so rare uh, in terms of, like, major, you know, yeah. there's, like... Um, but I mean that would that would be great. I would love to to do a movie that has like a giant um, thing. But I also I, I the thing that I love about TV is that you get to sort of grow with these characters and it feels like life. And that you're like I'm just doing one chapter at a time. I have no idea what's coming in two episodes or three. But like so there's sort of a nice um, kind of open ended. You're just like <clears throat> doing this one little section as opposed to I know the whole story and now I'm going to tell you the whole story at the same time it's like well, here we are right now and something could happen next week no that's true what was your out of all your TV gigs what was your favorite series that you had that you wish would have kept going oh gosh um I I loved I really have loved them all I know um, I know I, and, and I'm I, not taking anything away from the ones you no. don't pick I would say the the show that I did uh last year called Kevin Probably Saves the World was like it felt like to, on, to some degree like my dream show you know what I thought that was going to be because it looked like you oh but yeah then when yeah. I saw the previews I'm like yeah dude that's going to be it. yeah yeah that it just felt seemed... like the closest to me like, yes I, 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 I was just was like I I I, you know, I, yeah, I don't know. It's hard to explain, but again, I, I, not to take away anything from anything else I've worked on, but I did love that so much, and all the people on it were so lovely and amazing. Did your dad teach you any acting advice that you still use today? Yeah, yeah. Um, he, you know, he was always like a, a big proponent of sort of looking between the lines. You know, like you read a thing, you see the stage directions, you see your lines. And there's a whole world 
below that and the white of the page where you could have a moment where you could change something up where you could you know just you do eventually have to say that next line right but you don't have to follow the track that it necessarily has you know you could not want to say that next line but you have to because the script is forcing you to so but you know so was, he had a way of kind of looking for opportunities for either something funny or something different or something weird and like what can I what can I put into this little page that and that's been the that's been the most fun thing like still even auditions or like working on something when I'm reading something and I go oh I think I know something I could do like oh, in, see? In, yeah. In yeah. here between this and this and um, and it, then you're like engaged creatively instead of just being like a you told me to say this so I am right right that. right yeah. And I'm sure the, the producers and directors love that you're doing this white page homework, finding <laughs> stuff between it. Sometimes, yeah. <laughs> well, okay, Jason, that's fine and all, but just say the lines, dude. <laughs> Sorry, that's happened too. Okay, one thing, did he tell you that process or did you see him do that process? He told me that process. I mean, I, I've i been able to look through some of his old scripts and I've seen little notes that he's oh, like... Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, we have a bunch of uh, old stuff like that. Um, Does he have a script file? Because I always take my scripts and I want to do something with them. I mean, what's how's his scripts laid out? Uh, yeah, he had he kind of kept out of them all like uh, in a certain area. I don't actually know where they are now. I have a couple, um, but uh, but yeah, I, I know I I do the same thing. I keep mine. I'm like. Maybe someone, someone <laughs> is going to be like, you know, what show I like, but I think I can't sort of immediately, but like, I wish I could get my hands on the script. Um, Do you give scripts away from... I, I sometimes, yeah, I mean, I try, like, the reason I keep them is to try to, For, you know, keep, if I, yeah, if I can maybe, I don't know. You, that's, that's but so the nice longer you keep them, the, it feels like the less you, you could go to a charity and be like, maybe someone wants to bid on... This, well, know, Jason, like, but the fact that you're thinking of others says the says a lot. Oh, okay, thanks. now let me ask you this. Okay, that so that's all the good stuff. Now, mm -hmm. do you ever have a, do you ever wake up and go, man, I don't know if I'm ever going to work again? Just because you've worked so much, do you still have that worry? Oh yeah, you do. Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, it, yeah, it's like um, it's this it's this sort of feeling of like, uh, at what point will you know, anybody go like, well, that, I think that's enough. We get it. You know, we didn't really like it. You know, good, good try. You did, you did pretty well. Um, but um, we've seen it and, you know, we, we want someone else or, or, or like, you know, it's, it's like you, you know, the other idea is like you become stagnant or you become um, rusty or like, you know, and you see, some, some, even with some of like our greatest actors in the world, people who I absolutely respect, they, they begin to just do the thing that they do, which is great and everybody loves it. But like, you know, but the original performances that they gave that made us obsessed with them were the ones where they took risks and tried something. And, um, you know, so I think it's like, it's, it, it, the older you get, the harder it is to, you know, especially for, I mean, I've, I've noticed this in myself, like, oh, okay, here's the, am I just like, am I walking through this scene? Am I just going, oh, I know how to do this. I, I don't have to work as hard. Or am I like, you know, uh, am, I, am I not giving this my all? Am I getting lazy or am I, you know, so, but I also think that those, those questions are always good to be asking. I agree. Like, I would be scared if I saw every, you know, if I watched a performance of mine, I was like, nailed it. <laughs> That was the one. I'm so good. Like, are you guys seeing this? So I think it's good to. I think it's good to have a healthy level of sort of like. I feel like I can do better. Yeah, yeah, that Jason, you are absolutely right. That's that drives you to do better when you're questioning yourself. Yeah. Okay, really quick. Five page. You have a five page audition tomorrow. Yeah. How do you study for that? Is if what when you have, when you what's your average audition pages like for you because you're much bigger than me, is it a full script for an audition for you? How many pages? I, no, I mean the longest the, the longest auditions I I would have 
would be like for pilot season where they really want to make sure that basically you can do every scene in a, in a pilot. And those can be like 16 to 20 pages sometimes. Okay, so you get 16 to 20 pages and how long do they normally give you because you're auditioning for the pilot? Do they tell you the night before or do they say, hey, you're going to be coming in next week? What do they do? You ho Usually, hopefully, I'll get a couple of days. But okay. sometimes it's it's like the, the next day. Okay. And then, yeah. So let's just say next day. Tell me, just break it down. You don't have to do me detail by detail. Yeah, yeah. But break down how you are going to study your script. I make like a little pile of each scene. So there's like four scenes. And then I just, I'm like, I'm not thinking at all about these other three. I'm just going to focus on this first one. And then and like get it until I and just like slowly memorize it. How are you? How are you slowly getting it? Is it just saying the words over and over and over, or is there something else that you're doing besides with that? Gosh, that's a. I guess yeah. There, it's like partly. I'm 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 kind of thinking about it. I'm working through it. I'm kind of like you know looking for those little moments, and I'm sort of creating the journey of the scene that I am imagining in my head, and at the same time I'm trying to kind of get as much off the page as possible and and memorize it and you know um and uh and yeah and then so it's like i'll also break the scene into chunks because I, I it's very easy for me to get overwhelmed yeah me too any number of yeah things. sure so sure i just am like from here to here let me just do this little chunk from here to here and then the hard thing becomes like i know this chunk and i know this chunk and in between i'm like uh, so then I, I have to like stitch it together. Yeah. I have to memorize like the middle part in between the chunks and it's a whole big long oh, thing. Okay, right? last question. When you go into the audition, are you off book? I try to be. Uh, I, I, yeah, I try to be because basically, and sometimes it's impossible. Like some, especially in pilot season, sometimes it's just like, it's impossible. They're like 20 pages tomorrow. And there's a, another one that's 16 pages, and you're just like, oh. And then you memorize 20 pages, and they're like, we're only doing scene three. And you're like, that's my worst one. That's my worst one. Look, look, it said, look, I see the I could have really worked on scene three. I could have really, we spread me too thin. You spread me. Um, that could be a bummer. But, um, but yeah, uh, so I try to be memorized just because, like, I feel like that's the most honest version of, like, if I can give it that without being like, Ugh. But what I never want to, what you don't want to do is be like, <gasps> I put my yeah. sides on yep. the floor. So yep. I yep. often hold them in my hand. Yeah. Just Only in case the smart I have people like a, hold it just in case for yeah. that. But sometimes, uh, you know, sometimes it, it just doesn't, it doesn't go well. Um, but, but yeah, I, it's, um, auditioning is such an awkward, terrible process. And I still haven't figured out how to. Uh, it's a tough thing. Yeah. I see you. I always get excited. I rarely see you, but every blue moon I'll see you at an audition. And mm. it makes me excited when I see you there. <laughs> okay, me Jason. Too. We're going to start winding down here. Okay. You, the process continues. The adventure continues with the Ritters. Yes. You just had a brand new baby. Yes, I did. I can say this right? Yes, you, yes, you can. Uh, tell me. Tell me about your new baby. Uh, Melanie and I had a little baby girl. Okay. Congratulations. Thank the girls are the much. best. Girls are the best. Um, she's so sweet and cute. And uh, she's, yeah, I mean, I, I, it's like a whole new world. And But now, you know, it's, it's, it's sort of this thing where... All I want to do now is just sort of just look at it. Yeah, right? <laughs> right? Just, Seriously, yeah. man. That's yeah. that's what happens. Yeah. How old are you? I, uh, 17 and 10. Wow. No, 17 and 11. 11 as of, as of one week from now. So, wow. and it goes so fast, Jason. Oh my gosh. Jason, so fast. I, yeah. Do you know what your dad, do you know what your granddad's nickname was in the business? No. Oh, America's America's most, most beloved, beloved cowboy. cowboy. Yes, I did know. I'm saying that that's the way I'm ending this because he came up with that. But it, but the the amazing, wonderful thing about it is, is that's how I saw Tex Ritter. That's mm. how I saw your dad, and that's how I see you. You oh, are a man. beloved person. I have seriously, Thank you. you you've always been nothing but wonderful to me. I mean, you're seriously. You're, I just. I dig Thanks, you a man. lot, man. I Jason, dig you too. You're, you're awesome. Jason, anything else you want to tell the people out there? Um, I, I'm sorry I didn't get detail by detail, but you had 105 yeah. credits, so I'm not going <laughs> to spend nine hours here going <laughs> no, over no, each. I, 
appreciate it. I appreciate it. Okay, yeah. yeah. Now, I would, I guess I would say uh, that uh, I have a show coming on Netflix called Raising Dion that I'm really excited about, and it'll be in the fall. Wait, wait, wait in the fall. Are you enjoying Netflix, working for Netflix? Yeah, it was, it was, it was great. It was, a, it was a wild experience. Um, yeah. I okay. Jason, do me a favor. Yeah. Will you tell everybody bye? Bye, everybody.